Hello everyone, so in this video we will be talking about data cleaning and we are starting a series of videos on data cleaning. A lot of issues will be covered. First part of this series will cover the concepts of data cleaning and on the second part we will show you statistically using SPSS and R how to perform these concepts. So first we focus on interviewer fraud. There are five types of data cleaning issues as I am talking like interview fraud and then suspicious response patterns, data entry errors, outliers and missing data. So here focus is on interviewer fraud. What it is? So the interviewer is the person who is collecting data. It could be a research gradu graduate, a PhD student, a master student, bachelor student working for the professor, or a lot of the times it happens that companies and professors and universities outsource the data collection process to external research firms. So, so the person who is collecting the data is the interviewer, okay? And what is this interviewer fraud? First of all, there could be cases when the interviewer was helping the respondents to respond to the survey. So there, it, it, it's, it's a bit confusing because it could vary in a different range of like helping you know giving a brief introduction of the questionnaire and the options that's not a problem that's fine but influencing the respondents where to answer and what to answer this kind of issues should be avoided and there are cases when the whole surveys are being falsified it happens a lot like people do it for money like uh, there are cases when the survey data collection is based on number of complete surveys so People try to collect as much as possible when they can't, they just falsify the surveys to get more money. There are researchers also sometimes do these kind of things to get significant results. So th there could be many kind of issues, but we actually can solve this problem or identify this problem. The first thing is that we should never compensate the interviewer based on the number of surveys they collect. This is crucial. The second is that if there were multiple interviewers collecting data and if all of them were collecting a good number of interviews like maybe above 50 or above 100 and if the sampling procedure was similar for all of them then we can actually check it. We can, we can check the average of all the surveys collected by different interviewers uh, should be similar and if that is similar we can check for it we can use ANOVA or independent test so there could be different tests based on the properties of the data but we can do it and we can check for that another option could be to contact the respondents we often collect the email address or phone number of the respondents so we can contact them for feedback how was the survey did they find it good or if they have some ideas for improvement this kind of things and when you are asking for feedback, if the respondents say that they were never interviewed, so you know that there was some kind of cheating the interviewer did. If you are doing a longitudinal study, then you already have some previous data of your sample, of your respondents. The, the data you collect now should not vary too much from the previous years. You know, like you have a track like education, age and this kind of thing. So, like five years back the age was 15 and now it cannot be just 25 of the same respondent it should be 20 right so this kind of things we can check based on previous data and a useful tool is to use descriptive statistics in all these cases by using mean max and and the range and this kind of things we can actually identify if there was some suspicious issues in the data and we'll be talking about descriptive statistics more in later parts thank you for watching if you find it useful like comment share and subscribe